Hello and welcome to Sovereign RPG. I am Sovereign. Today we're back in Myth of Empires and today I'm going to teach you how to put your NPCs to work on different stations and what you actually gain, what skills you need to level up on those proficiencies for your NPCs and kind of give you an overview of what perks you want to be looking for for the different workstation. Now, as always, if you do enjoy my Myth of Empires content, remember to throw up a like. It does help with the algorithm. And if you'd like to see any more guides, I've got tons of different guides coming up on the game and there's more every day. So make sure to subscribe if you do fancy it. So what do you need to actually set up and have your NPCs work for you? You're going to need a lot of food. You're going to need NPC warriors that you've already recruited. You're going to need torture racks and stuff like that to be able to recruit those NPCs. And you're going to have to sort of have an idea of what stations you're going to be wanting to level first with your proficiencies now i do recommend on a lot of the different stations you're going to want to have at least the forging station have an npc on it for your armoring you can also level up the armoring in the tailoring station for the beginning if you want to actually get the proficiencies up on your npcs another good thing to have is a recruitment npc so you don't have to stand there for hours recruiting one of the high level npcs you just stick food on the actual torture rack and like the armorer that i have here which is my i'm sort of using it in between so i don't always have to build armor so it's also my recruitment npc you can just have the npc on there doing the talking it speeds up how quickly the npc gets it another big recommendation i would have is to have at least one tender one person who can actually work on your stables having a guy in there helps to keep the food going it speeds up the growth of your baby horses and he's able to tame horses for you so you don't have to stand running around and spending two hours getting on top of a heavenly horse for it to run off a cliff and die you can run it into your stable if you don't know how to actually tame a horse inside of your stable i do have a video for that i will leave a link for that in the description or just check out the channel as, as i said there's guides everywhere and for everything with vampires related if you do want to do a lot of growing another good one is to have an npc on a water well to make sure that the water in all of your planters are is topped up and used all the time if you have food inside of the actual well it will just pump water and everything around the area as you can see over here so the range of well everything inside of that range of the well gets watered all the potted plants you also would use this on a farm if you're taking over a farm let's close that range down as well as having an npc on the simple shed so you can automate your farm process the npc will go and do its thing it will plant replant and get get you better seeds get you better plants and you just basically set what's on there and it will just keep on going and going and going i will save the actual description of the farm npc for a separate video because there's a lot of stuff we have to go over with that one so let's take this npc off of the rack now i've leveled up my command so i can have two npcs for follow me around at any one time so when you go into actual stations themselves you can see that there's a warrior food area on the npc stations this is on all of them and you're going to want to stack your food inside of them if you're going to be using the drills dummy to level up certain proficiencies and actually get xp for your warrior again it's going to be in the warrior food you have the warrior food on a forge table you're going to have the warrior food on the architect's table now having an npc to actually do the building is not a good idea so if you are running around and you want to have somewhere to afk when you're crafting making the bricks making the wooden planks making the building pieces and all that do that yourself because it is massively important to have your building skill up especially if you're on a pvp server because the higher the level of your building the more durability of that building piece when you place it that includes all of the crafting stations that includes the guilds the stations the border markers the boundary markers and all that sort of stuff all of these things can have higher durability if you have someone with a high building skill placing them down so i would not recommend having a npc do all the building for you that's definitely not something i would recommend so to get the food over into the slot you just have it in your inventory and you basically just drag it over now me i'm a bit of a stickler for making sure that everything's okay so when it comes to the actual inventory of uh the npc that's on the rack and the inventory of your warrior that's doing the talking to i'll always have some food in there just in case because it can be a bit finicky it is an early access game and i just don't want anyone to die so once you have this npc following you you just have go over to the station you're using we're leveling up this guy's i'm actually currently leveling this guy's recruitment it was really low level it's not the best npc for it so this is the npc i'm currently using so you hold e on the actual station or the torture rack or anything that you want to actually place the npc to your stable etc you're just going to want to run over to send npc to work 
on the cool torture rack and you can just pick what one you want to do so we're going to click armor because that's the one that's currently leveling to do the recruitment for now until i find a better npc and that's how you do it on the torture rack now if we get our gentleman over here f1 f2 for follow on the archer this is just for testing purposes i'll show you how it's done you're going to want to go over to the forge table for example send npc to work and stick the archer on there well the, he's he's the archer obviously because he has over 600 archery and if we get attacked i just stick him up on the border walls and he fires down fiery death on people so when you have the actual npc attached to it they won't gain proficiency they won't gain xp and they they sort of gain xp passively over time the level xp just by eating that's basically how the horses and the npcs level when you put them on a drills dummy they're not leveling because they're on the drills dummy it's because it's taking more food quicker to actually level your npc so the more it eats the more xp that it gets per eating and it's also the same on the level of food that you do up there cooked rice for example will give you more xp per eat than the grilled locusts would give you so it's also good to have a little section set up to have better food for your workers so the only way for even if you have this guy on the station the only way for that person that's on the station the npc warrior on the station to gain proficiency is to actually use the station so you go in you just click on what you want to do and you'd start creating and right click craft more craft one or if you want to create everything of a certain type you just, you just hold down a we've got insufficient material in there because we're doing a bit of a base move and it will just craft that now it will give you xp and proficiencies for the crafting skill when you're crafting weapon if you're crafting armor in here it will give you xp and proficiency towards the armoring skill making things like ingots etc also levels up your crafting skill making stuff like bricks and planks etc will level up your building skill making higher levels of hide and leather so your thick leather etc will level up your armoring skill so every sort of skill has a subsystem of different skills that will level up a certain proficiency again i'll go into more detail on that in another video because there's a lot of stuff to talk about in that one so that is how you actually get the npc on the table that's how you get the work done that's how you level the proficiencies for the certain things the best way to level the proficiencies on npcs is to use lower tier stuff so your bronze stuff because you're going to get a lot of copper ore so bronze armor and weapons is a good way to level them bone if you've got a load of dens outside it does give a decent amount of xp proficiencies but you're also going if you're going to be doing a set of bronze armor bronze weapons etc for leveling up your different proficiencies on your npc you're going to want to open up inventory and you're going to want to go to the blessings and you're going to be looking at the warrior skill proficiency acquired that will speed up the same as the player proficiency one does for you you have one for warriors if you're going to be sticking them on the drill dummy warrior xp is acquired and it gets up higher your warriors also get xp for crafting certain things the same as the player does so the bricks will give you xp the crafting the arm will give you xp crafting buildings will give you xp etc and you'll also want to use these buttons but if you're leveling up the warrior so finally what we're going to go over on the last part of this guide is which npcs you should pick for which sort of station i'm going to give you a general overview of what you should be looking out for when it comes to your actual warrior skills etc now if you've got stuff on station the weaknesses do not matter the weaknesses only really matter if you're using them for combat there is one weakness on there which that i mean there's a there's a series of weaknesses that make the warrior eat more food that is a really bad weakness for using on stations because they will go through food like constant 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 like a puppy who's already eating food and it sees you eating some chicken and it's begging you for some more food the warrior will just go through food after food after food if that has that weakness which i can't remember what it's exactly called right now maybe if you remember let us know down in the comments that is not good for a station npc now when it comes to weaponsmithing and armoring you're going to be want to looking for the armor master which allows your npcs to craft the green and the blue molds to get better higher tiered gear if you don't know how to do the higher tiered gear or anything about the higher tiered gear i also have a video and a guide for that i'll leave that in the description for you you'll have different skills on there that raise the how quickly you'll be gaining proficiency in certain things how quickly you'll gain xp for certain things there's a whole massive list on them and if you want to actually have a look to see what kind of list there are you can go onto the tactics screen which has all of the abilities that you can get for different doing different things skillful learner these you have to unlock by killing npcs in treasure map location so when you go to the treasure map location you'll kill npcs and they will drop tactics 
that you can unlock. Some of them require more to unlock and you usually get about five uh, per tactic. And then you can unlock those in the actual skills of the warrior. But you can see all the different things that they have over here. I haven't done as much as I should do because I've been doing a lot of other things. You got Smithing Master, for example, if you unlock this one, it increases efficiency of the warriors gaining crafting and armor skill proficiencies by a certain percentage. You got Forging Master, which gives the chance for you to craft level 10 weapon molds. You'll have the Armor and Master, which I have on my guy, which allows you to unlock the level 10 armor molds. That is the green armor molds that you can actually unlock and they're not bad for you to be running around doing in pvp if you're using the blue ones it does take quenching essences etc and they're more hard to come by so you run around in greens is not such a big deal especially if you're running around in a smaller group or you're running around as a solo player so you can just go through the arc of strategy on the tactics menu you can see what our and what all of the different skills the warrior skills that you can find them randomly are so lastly we're going to talk about actual the proficiencies themselves now the same as a player you're going to have these dragon symbols and the more dragon symbols they have the quicker their proficiencies level so if you find one say for instance we're using this one with recruiting you're going to want at least two or three in the recruitment and the actual proficiency itself will level much quicker this one has quite a lot of proficiency upgrades on the actual crafting side so the armoring which i haven't leveled that much on this guy yet but i'm going to once i actually unlock the armor and crafting skill which as we talked about is over here the armor a master which crafted higher quality armor it requires at least 337 in armor and level 45 on the warrior to unlock it and this skill once it's unlocked allows you to craft any of those so the, the green the blue the purple the orange and the red however as we talked about earlier with the actual tactics themselves you will need to level up the where is it forging master and the armorer master so when you start to level it the first level will give you plus 10 levels so you can craft the green items and then the next level will allow you to do the 30 which is the blue then the 50 the 70 and the 100 when you level up the armorer master by getting those actual special skill books the scrolls from the treasury from the treasure map npc so if you find the armorer master and the forging master these are massively important without having these it's actually pretty pointless to have the npc leveling up it's crafting you should do it yourself because all you need to do is unlock the skill in your skill tree and that ladies and gentlemen is how you set up and get your npcs on stations what how to watch npcs to pick and how you can find out all the different skills that they have and what you should be looking out for for the different jobs by using the tactic screen i hope this was able to help some of you guys remember to like and sub if you haven't already for all your myth of empires content please let me know down in the comments if there are any particular guides that you do want we got a lot of guides coming up for that have been asked for by the community so make sure to look out for them i want to thank you all for watching fly safe and avoid local chat scams